Stick around to the end of the video. I'm giving away a really expensive, awesome solar power generator, everyone. Okay, so the last time we learned about the state of Florida, we learned a lot. Like, we learned where the good areas are, where the bad areas are, and what each region of the state's like. Most of the best neighborhoods to live in Florida are going to be in the Orlando and Tampa area. The best cities to live in are Palm Beach, Key Biscayne, and Sanibel. But those places are pretty expensive. Some of the worst places you can live in Florida are going to be in the North Miami burbs. Some of those areas are rough. We also learned that North Florida is very southern and not as populated. The middle part of the state is sort of affordable and mostly nice. And the southern part of Florida is expensive, more crowded, and has a lot more crime. A lot of people live along the coast where it varies from super rich to ghetto, depending on where you are. But there's a lot more to Florida than that. We didn't talk about some Florida history, interesting facts, and the issues that people in Florida face today. So that's what we're going to do in this video, kind of pick up where we left off in a more lighthearted way. We're going to look at all that stuff and even meet some people in Florida who are going to tell us what it's like to live in their state and where you could move if you relocated there. It's time for Corner House Tales, Florida, the freedom state. Florida is a place that's got it all right now. You should move here and then you can make this a more red state now. For all the Florida news you need to know, I'm Skip Fritzman. Thanks, Skip. Yeah, check it out. This is The Villages in Florida. It's pretty much the fastest growing place on the planet. No, that's a stretch, but it's growing faster than anywhere else in the country right now. It's not really a village or a city per se. It's a place, a giant master planned community for retirees. There's 80,000 people here just outside of Orlando and it's growing really fast. They have 50 golf courses here and more than 2,500 clubs and activities. It's kind of a big deal, but it's not just the villages that's growing fast everybody's moving to Florida. Well, not everybody, but 900 people a day are coming here. 2.7 million people moved to Florida in the last decade alone. That's like every single person in Kansas moving here in a decade. That's a lot. And this comes at a time when many states are losing people and the U.S. growth rate is all but stopped. Right now, seven of the top 25 fastest growing communities in the U.S. are here in Florida. Only Texas had more people move in. There's a lot of reasons people are flocking to Florida, but the main reasons are the cost of living, the climate, the politics, and the jobs. The state has no income tax, and it's about average for the cost of a home. The politics here have created a mad dash for those who want more freedom to run their businesses and freedom in their day-to-day -day lives. Of course, it's warm here. Well, actually, for about five months, it's way too hot. But when people up north are freezing their butts off in January, down here, it's not so bad. A lot of people feel Florida's moving forward, not backward. This state's towards the top with new job creation. Ever heard of Texas? It's a new term being thrown around. A lot of tech companies are fleeing their states and moving to Florida to take advantage of the tax savings and a friendly business climate. Financial institutions are also fleeing the New York City area and setting up shop here too. The schools are really good here. Florida ranks third in the nation for K-12 achievement, according to Education Week. The healthcare system is average. All these new people means a lot for our nation's politics. Florida's been a battleground state for a long time now. As more people move here, it could throw future presidential elections into doubt. Florida will probably decide our next president in an upcoming election. Here in the villages, it's very much a Republican stronghold. Will the rest of Florida's newcomers vote red too? Will the fast-growing Hispanic population here vote Republican like it did in 2020? We'll have to see, but for the first time in modern history, there's more active registered Republicans in this state than there are Democrats. But can Florida keep up with all this growth? Will too many people ruin a good thing? Will the cost of living rise and create a housing crisis here? Will the politics change with so many newcomers? Those are all issues that will be decided soon. I mean, people in Florida love to complain about all the snowbirds that come down here every winter. What happens when the surge in visitors becomes a permanent reality? Well, this Florida resident isn't very optimistic. She says, 
We native Floridians prefer you guys leave and stop making our property values rise, using up our fresh water, turning our land into giant neighborhoods that will one day be crack meth houses with random robberies everywhere. There is nothing left now, much less the future. We call Florida now the new New York hellhole. <laughs> and that, folks, is a dire prospect. Okay, enough with all that political discussion. You can get that on Fox News. It's time for some Florida facts, people. I'd love to learn about some facts. If you move to Florida like everybody else, you got to know some facts, right? That way you're knowledgeable about your future home. Stuff like this. One thing is sure, you don't have to travel far to see interesting things in Florida. Just hop in the car and travel to something new and something strange. Florida has 4,510 islands that are 10 acres or larger. Only Alaska has more islands. Pine Island off the coast of Cape Coral is the biggest island here. Some islands are as small as your front yard. Florida is the flattest state in the country. The highest peak in Florida is just 345 feet. That's the lowest peak in the country for any state. Here's how fast Florida is growing. Bradenton and Cape Coral both had more deaths than births, but they're still in the top 20 for the fastest growing cities in America. Wow. The Florida Reef is the third largest living coral reef in the world. It stretches south from the end of the state. You would know it as the Florida Keys. Lots of people come here to both hunt and be amazed by all the wildlife along its shores. It's pretty messed up, actually. Somebody's looking at some amazing fish, and then five minutes later, it's on somebody's boat. Florida is the only state to touch both the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. Half of Florida is covered by forest. Huh, that's interesting. Florida has 500 non-native invasive species, and they're wrecking havoc on this state. Examples are the Burmese python, feral hogs, tree frogs, cane toads, giant snails, iguanas, and New Yorkers. <coughs> on a sad note, flamingos, panthers, and manatees are almost extinct here. That sucks. At the current rate of sea level rise, it's predicted many of Miami's famous beaches are going to be underwater by 2050, and the entire lower third of the state is going to be underwater by the year 2100. That would sure change the political climate here, huh, everyone, if it was underwater? The Everglades isn't a swamp. Technically, it's a very shallow, slow-moving river. Interesting. Florida has the least number of earthquakes of any other state, but this state has the most rocket launches and most thunderstorms every year. That's cool. There's 1.6 million people in Florida who can't vote. Florida's felony disenfranchisement law used to state that anybody convicted of a felony lost their right to vote for life. Today, ex-felons can vote if they pay any fines they owe. Most cannot pay them. And most ex-felons who can't vote in Florida are black, and many are presumably Democrat voters. Michael Bloomberg personally paid the fines and fees for 32,000 ex-felons in Florida so they could vote in the 2020 presidential election. There are 428,491 millionaires in the state of Florida. Florida has a lot of retirees, but it's only the fifth oldest state in terms of the average age of its residents. The average Floridian is 42 years and three months old. In Maine, the average age is 45 years old. Forget the Midwest, Florida is the nation's biggest producer of sweet corn, people. Did you know California grows more oranges than Florida does now? I did not know that, Mappy. That makes sense. I can see that you like oranges. Hey, but that means it's time for some Florida trivia. Let's call some people in Florida and see if they can answer some tough Florida trivia questions. This will also let you meet some locals before you even move here. I like trivia time. All right, everybody. So joining me on a call right now is Brad, who lives in Orlando. What's up, Brad? <laughs> Not much. A beautiful day here. What can I say? Yeah, I'd, I'd imagine. I, I think it's probably like 20 degrees in most of the country, and it's what, like 75 where you live? It is exactly 75 and sunny right now. Wow. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to ask you five questions, and we'll see if you can get how many you can get right. Okay. All right, question one. Okay, so Florida has seven of the nation's 25 fastest growing cities. A lot of people are moving to Florida. 
<laughs> which which is the number one fastest growing city in Florida out of those seven? Oh God, the number one fastest growing. Oh shit. Um, it, it could be called a place or a community. I'm gonna go with Tampa, St. Petersburg, maybe. Okay, everybody. So joining me on a call right now is Terry, born and raised in Florida. How's it going, Terry? I'm doing great, Nick. Good. So we're going to do some trivia questions. Are you ready to try to see how many uh, Florida trivia questions you can get right? <laughs> sure. Let's go for it. Question number one. Okay. So Florida has seven of the top 25 fastest growing cities in the country. Which of Florida's uh, places is the fastest growing of all? Tampa, St. Petersburg. No, it's not Tampa. It's actually the villages. Uh, sure, sure, sure. The old folks. That's where the old folks live. Yeah, a lot of retirees in that master plan community. They've grown like 30 or 40 percent. It's like the fastest growing place pretty much in the country right now. So That makes sense. All right. So you did not get the first one. Let's, let's go on to question number two. What city is Mar-a-Lago in? Well, it's down in the Fort Lauderdale, Miami area. So it's a Palm Beach area. That is right. It is in yeah. Palm Beach. Yeah. Uh, let's see if you can get this one. Um, where's Mar-a-Lago? Uh, Mar-a-Lago is in South Florida um, near the coast. Palm Beach, I want to say. Yes. I'm right. Mar-a-Lago yeah, okay. is in Palm Beach. That is Good another job, place I probably won't be going. <laughs> it's a, it's a New York retiree area number two, I would say. Maybe that. The villages uh, there and maybe Sarasota, which isn't too far away from there. So, What's the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know, but I do know that the only place in the world where they both live together is the Everglades. <laughs> uh, Difference between an alligator and a crocodile. Well, and, and a crocodile is typically more of an Asian, uh, maybe Australia, that kind of thing. And a, a crocodile has a more rounded snout. When you see an alligator in the water, you can kind of see a little point uh, sticking up. And uh, to me, that's the that's the big difference when I look at them. I'll accept that. That's 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 a good answer. Yeah, yeah. down there in Florida, you got all kinds of crocs and gators, so you got to kind of. I'm sure a lot of people know the difference between the two, so. <laughs> yes. How much snowfall does Florida average every year? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, In inches. I, it's got to be less than one. I don't, <laughs> like, I, I've been living here for 13 years, and it has not snowed here. So maybe up north, like over by the Georgia border, it gets a little bit, but I, I have no idea. I mean, a, a point seven? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Zero is right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I, there's certain parts of the state they get like probably a dusting uh, right. every year, but like overall state average, it's not even, it doesn't even register. It's just zero. That's right. Um, um, okay, so question five, you got one out of the first four. I think that you're going to get this one. I have faith in you. How many professional sports teams does Florida have? Not soccer. I don't count that one. Oh, shit. Okay, so that's three NFL, two NBA, so that's five, uh, two NHL, that's seven, and two MLB, that's nine. So I want to go with nine. Nine. You're right. You got it. <laughs> That's right. All right, three out of four, Terry. If you get this one right, you're going to tie for the all-time record, uh, four Oops. out of five. This, awesome. I, all right, well, let's see if you can get it. Okay, so um, out of four, uh, Florida's major sports teams, not soccer, right? How many major sports teams does Florida have, not soccer? Yeah, so I'm, I'm counting baseball and football, but professional. Are you counting? Uh, Basketball uh, and hockey, all, NBA and NHL. Those are all right. Okay. That's right. So seven, uh, eight, eight, it would be my answer. Oh, Terry is nine. Oh, oh you were I so miss? close to tying the all time record. Which one did I miss? But we got Florida Panthers, Tampa Bay Lightning. We got the Jaguars, the Dolphins, the Bucks. We have the Heat and Magic and the Marlins and Devil Rays. I think you just forgot about the Florida Panthers. And now it's time for the history of Florida in three minutes or less. 
a long time ago before Florida was even Florida. It was underwater. Then the seas went down and Florida emerged from a warm, shallow ocean bed. Which is ironic because now Florida might be underwater again one day. But Florida's history was shaped by the state's shape and location. The state's close proximity to the ocean has defined its culture, identity, and daily life. There's been a bunch of Native American groups here for the last 14,000 years. You've heard of the Seminoles. They came here in the 1700s, but they were run out by Europeans who made their way to this land. Florida was actually the first region of the continental U.S. to be visited and settled by Europeans. In 1513, Spanish explorer Ponce de Leon became the first known European to make landfall here. There's a rumor he was looking for the Fountain of Youth because some Native Americans told him there was a healing spring that would magically make you younger. That story cannot be verified. Spain kept coming here in droves, though. After Ponce de Leon came another explorer from Spain, Hernando de Soto. He built the place up a lot, too. So many Spaniards came to Florida that they pretty much ran the place for a long time. They either ran out the Native American tribes or converted them to Christianity. In 1565, they established St. Augustine, which is regarded today as the oldest settlement in the nation, even way before Jamestown or Plymouth Rock or Roanoke. The Spanish were really into converting people to Catholicism, and it wasn't just the Native Americans either. They even told all the slaves in all the other states to come to Florida and they would be free if they became Catholics. Many did, and at one point, half of Florida was African American. But the Spanish reign didn't last forever. Eventually, England came in and they settled in North Florida, and then the French came in and they settled on the West Coast. In 1763, Spain traded Florida to England for control of Cuba. In return, Spain got Louisiana from France. <laughs> what the hell? These rich kings just traded all this land with one another? So then the British were in charge of Florida for a long time. They ran this place from about 1763 to 1783. During that time, they built the place up and harvested sugar and indigo and lumber and fruit. In fact, Britain was so entrenched in Florida that Florida never declared war on England during the American Revolution. But we kicked Britain's butts in the American Revolution, and they lost Florida, and the Spanish got it back. At that point, Florida was then divided into East Florida and West Florida. But Spain couldn't run this place from so far away, you know, with all those crazy Florida rednecks running around. So they gave both Floridas to the U.S. in 1821. 24 years later, Florida became our 27th state in 1845. When the Civil War broke out, Florida hardly participated at all. Up until the 1940s, Florida was the least populous state in the whole southern U.S. I mean, in 1900, there were only a half million people here, and nearly half of them were black. It also didn't help that about 20% of Florida's black population then left for the north for better jobs and treatment. But then came air conditioning. In the 1950s, AC was all the rage, and people could then tolerate Florida's harsh climate. People realized, hey, there's a lot of cheap land down here. After World War II, a lot of people fled the harsh winters of the Midwest and Northeast for Florida. And then in the 1960s, a bunch of refugees fled communist Cuba, and they came here too. Word began to spread, and the gig was up, people. Then they built a big theme park and a bunch of trailer parks and condos on the coast. 20 hurricanes hit, and then somebody brought meth in. Then a presidential election was disputed because of poorly designed voting machines. And that really happened. Okay, so we learned a lot more about Florida, didn't we? The biggest question is, will people keep moving here in large numbers? Despite the skin cancer and the hurricanes and the alligators and the scorpions and the snakes and the meth heads and Florida man, it's still the most popular place for people to move to these days. Hopefully, all those newcomers don't ruin this state. Because America doesn't need any more ruining, does it? Florida is such a filled up place There is nothing here for you now Just kidding, Florida is A place that's got it all right now You should move here and then you Can make this a more red state now Now talk to me a little bit about Florida. So you have a Facebook group called Leaving California, um, and you help people who are leaving California relocate. You give them advice, and I think you refer them to agents in states that they're looking to move to, correct? Yeah, and, and I'll tell you the background. Uh, three and a half years ago when I was living in California, I wasn't happy. 
Uh, I the cost of living to me, this is my number. I think the cost of living in California goes up about 10 percent a year. And I don't think that's an exaggeration. And if you think about that's after, after tax money. So you've got to make about 15 percent more a year just to stay even. And every year, you know, California has no regard for how much or how little you as a as a taxpayer have. It's just like we just need more. We need more. We get, we've got more programs we need to implement. Uh, the gas uh, tax goes up every year. Uh, so certainly the highest gas in the country. And so I started a Facebook group called Leaving California and then a second one called Life After California to see from people who had left what life is like afterwards. So today uh, here in uh, early 2022, we have uh, 117,000 members and growing quickly. That's great. Now, you're born and raised in Florida. You moved to California. You decided you wanted to leave California. So you're back to Florida again. I wanted to like let everybody know that you're in Florida again. Um, are you worried that Florida is going to become California or California like with all the people that are moving there that are coming from all over the country? I mean, is, are, are people in Florida worried that it's going to all the newcomers are going to turn it back into where they're leaving from? It's certainly a concern. And don't forget that uh, the majority of people moving to Florida from out of state are probably moving from New York and New Jersey and places like that because it's East Coast. It's a, it's a much further trip, obviously, to move from California to Florida, but there's still a lot of Californians moving here. That is certainly a concern, but what I believe is that the vast majority of people who are leaving right now are mostly on the more on the conservative side, and they understand the reason for that. Those, you know, I didn't start my group as a conservative group. I don't mind telling people I'm conservative. I am, but those are the people who are the most unhappy, you know, the people who don't want to be forced into getting the vaccine. The people who don't want uh, critical race theory or, um, or or sex education thrown on their kindergartners, and literally that, that's happening in California. Those are the more conservative people. And so I think those are the people who are leaving right now. Now, down the road, when, when people can't afford to live there, you know, anybody from a, especially a middle class person, I think you will have the, the left leaving also, moving to other places. And and. I've got enough leftist friends. I, I worked and lived in the Bay Area for 35 years. I've got a lot of friends who are on the left. They don't see a problem at all with the leftist agenda and what's happening, but they, they won't be able to afford to retire in California because they just there's just not enough money for them. Yeah, I, I just read a report that says there's more conservatives, registered active conservatives in Florida than Democrats for, I think, the first time in a long, 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 long time. Um, yes. Are you – so – how do you feel about the growth, though? Not necessarily the type of people that are going to be coming into Florida, but just the sheer amount of people. Are, are, are locals worried that there's just too many people coming in? Is that a thing? I don't think so, Nick. Certainly it's a concern, but it's not like California. California has a massive shouting, uh, uh, housing shortage because they don't, let, they don't let growth happen. They don't, you know, they protect all the hills. They protect, and I'm not for unbridled growth either by any means. But the, the average Californian who's middle class is probably commuting one to two hours each direction each day because they can't afford a house near their jobs. Here, it's a lot different. There is still a lot of room for growth. And I again, I'm not for unbridled growth, but I just took a flight from recently from Orlando to Atlanta. And Nick, there is a ton of open land still. And I'm not saying we put houses on every bit of it, but... Uh, you know, Florida has doubled in population just since I left in the in the 80s uh, to over 20 million now. And I I still don't experience anything near like what I experienced in California. Is the freeway crowded during rush hour? Yes, but it's not crowded when it's not rush hour. In addition, I think we're helped by the demographic or the geography. If you think about it, there are lakes all over Florida. There's lakes all over the, the neighborhoods where I live. Well, guess what? You can't put houses on those lakes. So there aren't people who are going to build houses in those open areas, and, and all of a sudden you've got a ton more traffic. I drive my son to school every day, and it's no big deal. We just sit through traffic lights, and we drive back and forth. But I don't, you know, the, the traffic isn't that much different than when I lived here in the, in the 70s and 80s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but if there's lakes everywhere, then are you going to run out of room to put homes? If I mean, how many subdivisions can you build on top of swamps out there? Well, you you, you, well, you can certainly fill in swamps, but the the, the vast majority they're just going to it's just going to expand outwards, and, and and that's happening now, and that's going to continue to happen. Okay, yeah, we're, we're I think most 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 conservative folks are pulling for you guys to 
you know, you, you could be the leader uh, uh, in the, you know, a decision maker in, in the next election, like it was in 2000 when we had that Bush Gore thing. I could see Florida being a, a big, a big decision, you know, a, a key state coming up for, for years to come. So I th- <laughs> there's a lot of conservatives out there that are pulling for Floridians to hold the ground. And, yeah, uh, and Nick, let me add this to that. That's a great point. Those of us who experienced California and other other states that turned very blue, you know, California was not a blue state when I moved there in the 80s. You know, we had Republican governors. We voted for Reagan as president. We actually used to get income, uh, state income tax rebates because Sacramento said, well, we don't need all this money. And they would send back rebates. Well, that hasn't happened in decades. But and I was raising my family then, working full time jobs, everything else. Well, I will tell you, as a man in his early 60s, I am very active in politics here. I am very active in helping make uh, doing everything I can as a conservative to keep this state from turning blue, because if we lose the the red states, it's over. And and you mentioned specific states. I think it's more of a national movement to change the country blue as opposed to a state by state. Uh, And you see it now, you know, gas prices are up literally 50 cents a gallon since I moved here. Of course, inflation is off the charts right now. Um, so I think they want to Californiaize the rest of the country um, on a national level, as opposed to uh, you know necessarily just district by district. And maybe I'm sure they're doing that, but I think it's more of a a threat from a national perspective as opposed to a state and local perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, so the Hispanics voted for Trump in Florida at a much higher rate and in Texas than the people had expected. Um, why do you think that is? Well, first of all, you've got a huge Cuban population here and Cuban populations that you still have a lot of people. I've got friends who are Cuban who were born in Cuba and they were raised, you know, their parents immigrated here after Castro took over and they were raised. Socialism, communism is not the future of our country. It is to be feared. It is to be fought. And I think a lot of those people, uh, still maintain that. So the Cuban population, you don't have to worry about. As far as the Hispanic population, many of them came here legally. And many of them spent you know, years and, and t- uh, typically thousands of dollars to come here legally. And now we're letting, uh, who knows who, you know, there's hundreds or dozens of countries that have come across the border illegally. Who knows who they are? Who knows what their backgrounds are? Do we want to spend our tax dollars supporting them? Because most of them uh, you know, have virtually no education and they're just going to be laborers and they're going to need things like food stamps and medical and then things like that. And uh, housing. Do we as taxpayers want to have our taxes raised to support all of that? None of us. I don't know anybody who's anti-immigration. I don't know anybody. We are a nation of immigrants, but we're a nation of legal immigrants, not a nation of illegal immigrants. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we need we, uh, the U.S. population. uh Growth rate has has definitely dropped off. It's almost at zero now, and the only way we're going to continue to grow the country is by immigration, uh, which we've done in the past. But you know, legal and there's there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. Um, I totally agree with you on that one. Um, what are some issues, or, or an issue if there are any, that Florida needs to be aware of, in your opinion, in the next decade or two, like down the road? What does that? What does your state need to kind of be concerned about, or issues you might face? I think it's it's uh, first of all the education system. You know, uh, the California education system. You know, I, I've got two wonderful sons, both of whom one is a late teen, one's a early in his early twenties in college. The education system there in California became an indoctrination uh, program. It they absolutely it was one sided. It was, this is the way the world is. The world needs to be leaned towards socialism. Um, you know, the uh, MSNBC is our source for news. And really, that's the sleeping giant to me. You know, the, the, edu- the unions in California run California. We need to really be careful of our education system here. And then we need to make sure we, we keep all of our freedoms. You know, it's, uh, it's, almost a, a, a slow death when you allow your freedoms to be taken away one little bit at a time, right? The, the, the frog boiling, everyone's heard that, the frog is boiling. You've got to maintain the, your rights and you've got to fight for those rights and keep those rights, help the, you know, keep the education system where we're actually educating our children to become productive members of society, 
not indoctrinated clones who, who uh, you know, espouse that socialism is the only way um, for our country to move forward. And then I think you're exactly right. I think illegal immigration is a real challenge. You know, they've been shipping a lot of people coming across the Texas border illegally to Florida and to Tennessee and, and, and red states like that. Well, if if we don't watch it, they're going to they're going to legalize those illegal immigrants. They're going to make them citizens and they're going to vote. And most of them, if not, you know, a vast majority of them are on some kind of public assistance and will continue to vote that way. Uh, and so we need to fight. There's a lot of fights to be fought, but the, the, to me, those are the big battles over the next 10 years. And to make sure, just as you brought up before, make sure our growth is is smart growth. Make sure that we're not just just putting in houses everywhere, especially there are floodplains, there are swamps still in Florida. Uh, we just have to be careful about planning our growth and and make sure that we stay a free state. That's what I want to see is, is us to stay a free state. And that's the biggest concern that people have in our leaving California groups is I don't want to move somewhere else. And, and by the way, the vast majority of the people in my groups are leaving because they feel like they have to, whether it's cost of living or politics or freedoms. They don't want to move somewhere else where the same thing happens again 20 years from now. It's it's a big deal to uproot your family and move, and they don't want to go through the same thing again. So that's why we've got to we've got to fight to keep the freedoms that we have, and uh, and never give up on those freedoms. Amen to that, Terry. Keep Florida, Florida. <laughs> that's right. Well said. I'm sure a lot of people happy to hear you say that. Florida is really like three states. There's North Florida, South Florida, Central Florida. Um, North Florida is more like the South, I guess you could say, from Pensacola through Jacksonville, that area. It's it's very nice. It's like Old South. You'll see all kind of like those older, you know, stately homes, very nice beaches, nice people. Um, Central Florida is more like a mishmash of the rest of the world, all put together in this one random place. Of course, we talked about in the video, Orlando has a lot of Puerto Ricans and it has a lot of New Yorkers and people from the Northeast in general. But there's also people from all over the world there who buy property. So people from the UK, people from Brazil. Uh, so it's just kind of this mishmash of all these different cultures in Central Florida. Um, and then South Florida is basically Latin America. It's like Latin America, retirees, like Miami, may as well be a different country from Jacksonville. It's just, it's a totally different kind of culture. Um, both are really cool. I'd recommend visiting both. Uh, but yeah, I would say North Florida is more like the South. South Florida is, you know, kind of like Latin American. And Orlando slash Central Florida is um, is like the rest of the world all mixed into one. But Florida in general as a state, if you go to a really rural area, um, is very much like Old South still somehow. <laughs> if you go an hour outside of Orlando to some random town, even if it's still in Central Florida, it's uh, it's going to be like Old South. But the mm -hmm. city's not so much, maybe except for Jacksonville, Pensacola. Yeah, all right. I think that'll help people try to figure it out. Um, if you were going to tell people – where to move, middle-class family with kids that wants to get the hell out of New York or California or Illinois, and they want to move to Florida. If you're going to pick like three places that are still somewhat affordable, but also safe and nice, where would you tell people to go? Mm -hmm. um, of course I would choose Orlando but I'm biased. <laughs> I've never really lived in North Florida or South Florida. So I, I wish I could give them like an accurate, you know, I know Orlando and Tampa really well. And if you buy, you know, a three to $400,000 house in Orlando or Tampa, you're going to be pretty good. Um, generally, if you go cheaper than that, you're going to get kind of trashy. If you go, you know, more expensive than that, it'll be more expensive than that. But um, in, in the Orlando Tampa area, you know, I, I like areas like um, like the area that I live, like Horizon West or Winter Park or Oviedo or something like that. But if you go to Tampa, there's uh, you know Clearwater is pretty nice. I I wouldn't want to live in like Tampa, the city. It's it's pretty it's pretty shitty. But um, you know the outlying areas are generally fine. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't want to live in Miami. I feel like I would get like 
flooded in Miami. <laughs> they, you know, that's like climate change central there, you know, eventually. Um, but I've been there several times and there's not, it's nothing wrong with it other than that. It's, you know, it's, uh, I'm sure it's got, it's dangerous, expensive and all that. But if you go to a, an area, you know, four or 500,000, I'm sure it's fine. Um, and Tallahassee is really nice too, but once you get into North Florida, um, you know, they've got really nice beaches along the panhandle, but there's really not that much to do there. <laughs> um, other than the beaches, you know, the, that's where if you go to Gainesville or Tallahassee or um, areas to the west of there, you know, you got beaches and that's that's about it. Mm -hmm. What part of Tampa, north, south, east, west is the best part of Tampa? I would say Clearwater by far and maybe the surrounding areas around it. Uh, Clearwater would be what? It would be like west of Tampa, I think. Um and there's some area, there's some areas like Largo. Um, I probably wouldn't want to live in. Um, Palm Harbor is pretty nice. I'd say around there. Mm -hmm. Downtown Tampa is kind of dumpy. Well, downtown, like there's maybe three or four blocks that are really nice that are being gentrified, and that's kind of going out. But Tampa in general is not. I mean, I'm a theme park guy. I grew up in the theme park business. So when I think of Tampa, the first thing I think of is Busch Gardens and USF, which are right next to each other. And like the surrounding like 20 blocks around there. And that place, Busch Gardens is really nice, but like the neighborhood it's in is kind of a hole. Um, and uh, Tampa, I guess, other than, other than the beaches, it has kind of a similar problem to Orlando where it's relatively low income. Um, which you could say about a lot of Florida, but um, yeah, you just have to, it's similar to Orlando. If you cross one of the streets or if you cross the train tracks or a bridge, it could go from being really nice to really bad or really bad to really nice. Uh, so you really have to do your research. I wish I'd give you more info on it. I've never lived in Tampa just based off my observations, but um, it's got a lot of really nice areas and it's got its areas that, that are struggling. What, which cities have the most homeless Pro the biggest homeless problem in Florida? Um, probably Miami, I would think, just because of the circumstances with how expensive everything is there and how prevalent drugs and things are. Um, surprisingly, so Jacksonville, um, I, when, when Jacksonville drafted Blake Bortles, I had to become a Jags fan, of course, because I went to UCF. Um, so I've been to quite a few Jags games and homeless everywhere in Jacksonville. Um, more so than, than I think most people would expect, but Jacksonville is a pretty poor city too. But, um, yeah, I would say probably Jacksonville there's when you, you know, you walk through their downtown and stuff, there's, there's a lot of homeless people. That's crazy. I, I was just there January. So a year ago I was there mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't see, we drove around downtown. I didn't see a single homeless person. It was, it was dead. It really? COVID was like in full throat, but like. I didn't see any, anything that I saw a couple stragglers walking around. Um, I saw a lot of police driving around in parks, but downtown's dead. I didn't see any of that stuff. Oh, yeah. well, maybe they just come out for the Jags games to yeah. sit there. I don't know. <laughs> you know and it, it's, it's cyclical. They move around and then they come yeah. and go and all of a sudden they pop up and then they're in a different part of the city. So, yeah. And I've, I've seen quite a few homeless people in um, I've been to Fort Lauderdale a couple of times, which is weird because it's a rich city. But um, I've, I've seen more homeless there than I have pretty much anywhere other than Jacksonville. Um, I haven't really noticed a homeless problem in Tampa. Um, Orlando, the areas directly surrounding downtown, um, there's always a few homeless people. It's nothing, it's nothing like California or anything like that, but there's, there's a few here and there. Yeah, nothing's like California. Give people an idea of like which months it's just brutal down there. I would say like you said, late April through October, it's going to be hot. I, you can guarantee if you come here late April through October, it's going to be hot. November, it cools down a little bit. It can still be hot in November. Um, it can still be hot any time of year. But uh, if you come like in November, December, it's probably going to be nice. But if you come in October, it's still going to be hot. A lot of people make that mistake. They think, oh, I'm going to go to Florida in September or October, and it's going to be nice because it's the fall. No, it's still going to be really hot and humid. Um, but it, it seems like every year, October 31st is really hot, and then November uh, 1st is pretty nice. It's just a weird thing. But, yeah, it'll get down in the, 
you know, the lower eighties in November and the high seventies and then December rolls around and it gets, it gets nice out. So um, how do people feel about all the growth? You know, Florida is one of the fastest growing States. It's just getting, it's accelerating in the number of people that are moving to Florida for various reasons, politics, um, cost of living, um, you know, the weather, how do people in Florida feel about the fact that it's just becoming the go-to spot even more so today? Well, cost of living is a misnomer that people have. They think, oh, it's going to be cheaper to live in Florida, but it's not. <laughs> uh, a lot of people move down here and they look at these pictures online and they're like, oh, that looks beautiful. It's got palm trees and everything. And look how cheap that house is. But when you when people get here, they don't realize that um, there's a reason I guess the price of the house is cheaper. So I'll tell you, I, a lot of people move to Orlando um, and they buy a house in Kissimmee and they think, oh, I'm going to sell my apartment or my townhouse or whatever in New York for $500,000. And look at this big house I can get in Poinciana or Kissimmee for the same price. And then they go and they visit the school and they're like, I'm not sending my kid there. And all that money that you were saving from you know, for your taxes and all that, you end up spending more on private school for your kids. Um, and also because so many people have been moving here and we haven't really embraced high density living like we should, <laughs> we're very much a, an American state. So, you know, we have single family housing and all that kind of stuff that spans and sprawls everywhere. Uh, the cost of living just keeps going up and up and up every year. So yeah, maybe 20 years ago, it was relatively affordable to live here, but now it's not. Um, it's just, it's just like anywhere else. That's a big city. <laughs> uh, it's, and uh, so, yeah, the wages have been going up. They've been going, you know, slowly up. And over the past few years, they've been going up a lot more, but it's still an expensive state to live in. Of course, if you live in like rural podunk, you know, Florida, it's going to be a lot cheaper, but that's true for anywhere. You know, you could live in rural California and it'll be, you know, half the price of living in, in LA or something or, you know, less than that. But um, so it's, People think, oh, Florida is cheap. Just because we don't have a state income tax doesn't mean that you're not paying taxes. I mean, when you move down here, the first thing that you have to do is register your car. And we don't have a state tax to handle all these people that are moving here. So to register your car is like $500 or something crazy like that, you know, because <laughs> like, you have to pay an impact tax to move down here. So I, I want to dispel that rumor. It is not cheap to live here. If you want to move here, that's great. You got no, nothing wrong with that. We're happy to have you here, but don't come down here thinking it's cheaper because uh, it probably won't be. Um, yeah, and I, I think people are fine with people moving here in general. It's just uh, a constant growth. Like I said in the last video, it's been like for Florida, probably 50 years of constant growth. So I, we're just used to it at this point. It's like, all right. So what are some issues that are facing Florida, Floridians today? The cost of living, as stated before, is the main one. Um, if we don't, if we don't change, which let's be serious, we probably won't. <laughs> um, the cost of living is just going to keep going up and up, and we're going to end up just like California. You know, if you look at if you look at California, you have mountains, you've got ocean, and you've got desert, and then you've got areas where people can live. And I feel like a lot of the areas where people can live are mostly filled in California. Um, and it's filled with, you know, LA is very much a car centric city. What are you going to do? You know, the only thing you can do is overpay to try to fix the problems that you made in the past. Um, and that's, that's kind of the way that it is here too. We keep building and sprawling and building and sprawling. And eventually we're going to have a situation where the cost of living is just going to be crazy. It's already happened in Miami. Uh, Miami has the ocean on one side and it's got the Everglades on the other side. There's not many places to expand. And now the cost of living has just gotten out of control. Um, so that's, that's our biggest challenge. I would say our other, I would say it, our other biggest challenge, I guess has been, um, no, I don't want to say it. <laughs> Politics. Yeah. Uh, Florida has always been a swing state. It still is a swing state, but, um, it was really weird to see Georgia go Democrat and have Florida be solid Republican. Uh, that was something that I never thought I would see, but it, it happened in the last election. And uh, there definitely is a lot of people who come here as tourists and think, 
oh, well, the governor is marketing this place as, you know, there's no COVID here. So uh, sadly, the numbers show differently. We do have very, very high COVID cases. I live in Orange County, where like half the people that are getting tested are testing positive. Um, and I don't know, I'm not, I don't know what the solution to that problem is. Maybe everyone has to get it, you know, in order for it to be fine. I don't know. But I do know that the marketing of the state by the state government has not been the way that I would do it. You know, I'm not foreclosing everything, but I'm also not for going out and telling the rest of the country, hey, come here and and you don't have to wear a mask anywhere and you don't have to social distance and everything is open without any rules, which is which is true, which is fine. But, you know, you, you really have to there's some places where you really have to watch out for to make sure that <laughs> that you're not going to get covid. Yeah, no, I get you. I mean, a lot of people think that, you know, Florida, you can go down and be free and, and you know, businesses have less restrictions. Um, mm -hmm. People have it's more true. There, and... there are no restrictions here. There really aren't. I mean, people are just doing what they want to do, which is fine. But you don't have to go out and tell the rest of the country, which attracts, you know, nefarious people who come here and try to do nefarious things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess the next question was going to be what's Florida's future look like. And you seem to be a little pessimistic uh, based on the the type and the number of people that are coming to Florida. Like you kind of think it's just going to be ruined at some point with um, all the people coming in and the type of people coming in. Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm pessimistic. I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic that the economy is going to grow a lot. I'm optimistic that, um, you know, we have our high speed rail. It looks like we're going to be the first state that's actually going to get, I, I don't know if you consider it a high speed rail. It's like 180 miles an hour or something like that. Um, actually, I think it's significantly less than that. It might be less than that. But um, so there's going to be a lot of economic growth here. That's for sure. It's, uh, but the cost of living, it, sadly, I'm not seeing the steps being taken in order to control that, um, that, that we need to take. So it's, it's going to become similar to California or a place like that where it's going to be very crowded. There's going to be traffic everywhere and it's going to be really expensive. So you do not and it, it already is. Honestly, it already is. It's just going to be more. Yeah. You do not want to be California. Texas is learning the hard way. Arizona, Nevada, Oregon, yeah, Colorado, Idaho, Montana. <laughs> They're learning yeah. the hard way. No, I mean, most of the people leave in California. I, I, not most. There's more people leaving California that have good intentions that just want to change. Yeah. They're tired of the, of the, some of the politics and, and a lot of the crime and the cost of living. And they, they want to go somewhere that it's safer and cheaper. Um, they have good intentions. They're not trying to change the politics per se. Um, it is sort of slowly happening, but I don't think that's their agenda. Um, that's just my opinion. What about Jacksonville? Jacksonville is weird. It's just a very weird scenario because Florida is up and coming and it's like booming and there's all these great places for families to live. And Jacksonville has that too, but it doesn't seem like it's realized its full potential. For whatever reason, you know, you always hear about Tampa, you hear about Miami, you hear about Orlando, and Jacksonville is just kind of there. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of like if I had to choose to live in North Florida, um, you know, Jacksonville has really nice beaches over there along the coast. I would say like Pensacola or Tallahassee or somewhere like that is probably a better place for families to live than Jacksonville. But um, if you if you're into, you know, if you're into beaches and stuff like that, Jacksonville can be fine. It's it's definitely not as it's not as nice as some of the other Florida places, um, but it's got some nice state parks. I'll, I'll give it that. I, I when I was there, I gathered the west side was the bad side and the east side was the good side in Jackson. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Now Tallahassee, I, uh, we kind of briefly talked about, but how would you describe Tallahassee? Tallahassee is a college town and uh, similar to Gainesville, but Tallahassee I think is probably a little bit nicer than Gainesville, but uh, really not that much to do. Um, but you're, I guess you're relatively close to some other big cities you're relatively close to Jacksonville um, and you're in North Florida there. So it's quieter than the rest of the state. You're not going to get as much traffic or anything like that, but it's just a nice little place to live. Yeah. I went to see the, I went to the worst 
quote unquote worst neighborhood in Tallahassee. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is not bad at all. Jacksonville's was way worse. Yeah, definitely. Like, uh, uh, Gainesville isn't very big. It's like the college and then maybe the surrounding neighborhoods. And then I, you know, you're, that's about it. <laughs> Your closest big city is probably Orlando or, yeah, you know, maybe Jacksonville. I don't know if that's closer, but um yeah, I mean, Gainesville isn't really a place I would want to live. Uh, it's a great place to go to college. I don't really know what there is to do there other than that. But um, it's kind of similar to, I don't know, if you think of a state like like Illinois or something, how they've got Chicago up top, and then they've got Champaign in the middle, and they've got all those little cities around Champaign, like Peoria and stuff like that. But there's really nothing in between. It's kind of like that with with Florida and the sense of you have like Orlando and then you have up top, you've got Jacksonville and then Gainesville is just kind of there in the middle. Mm-hmm. Like, you know? Yeah. I, 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 um, I hear that people have to, you know, worry about stepping in and, you know, they say anything that's like ankle deep water. probably. Absolutely. Has yeah. You do not go in water here. I, <laughs> I would not, you know, not only that, but grass, like, because not only alligators, but snakes, like I'd never go anywhere barefoot. Unless I'm, if I'm going to be on pavement, I'll wear sandals or something, but you don't want to go walking through, you know, random tall grass without ample protection Mm-mm. because you, you could easily get bitten by a snake or something of the like. Yeah. I hear there's like iguanas everywhere down there that like hang in the trees and then they, they fall asleep and fall on people's heads and cars. Is that, is, are there iguanas everywhere? Or is that, that is true. Yeah. That's a South Florida thing more than than um orlando or jacksonville or anywhere like that but if you live in miami or hialeah or somewhere along the coast there uh there's they've got an iguana problem now i think iguanas are invasive i don't know how they got here but um it is legal to kill them it's encouraged to kill them because they're invasive and they're everywhere down there oh like just run them over or shoot them Uh, how do you Mm -hmm. kill an iguana Mm -hmm. Uh, i shoot it. <laughs> and uh, we actually have a contest here every year. I don't know if this is one of your questions or not, but they have a contest who can catch the most um, uh, Burmese pythons <laughs> in the Everglades uh, because those are invasive as well. And they're, they've been breeding in the Everglades, taking out the natural animals there. So every year, um, they actually have a contest who can kill the most invasive pythons in the Everglades. And you get some interesting people who, who go out there and catch them. So I'm sure yeah. there's a catch prize and all that. But that is endorsed by the government. You know, the governor goes out there and, like, takes a photo op with them and everything, the winner. So. That is so Florida redneck. Florida's got a bunch of bugs and critters. So if you're thinking about moving to Florida and you don't like bugs and critters and stuff that'll kill you then don't move forward <laughs> yeah well said okay so the good folks at Ocmo sent me a couple of these great solar power generators and i'm giving one away to you guys or one of you guys these things are really neat they can charge up to 2000 watts so that's like a fridge a fan a few phones and a couple lamps at the same time as many of you know i live in north carolina so i have to worry about hurricanes and something like this is gonna come in really handy. I'm gonna be the only guy in the hood with power if the gas runs out. You can charge these things using these solar panels, which have these neat arms in the back so you can angle the solar panels where you want them for an optimal charge. You can also charge this bad boy up by using a traditional outlet into your house or even your car battery. I hear it takes about 11 hours to charge it up while plugged into your house. They say the solar panel also takes 11 hours to charge, but I think that's only if it gets really bright and sunny light. The packaging it comes in is really nicely done. Seriously, this thing is sturdy and well put together. Good job, Ocmo. If you live in southeastern North Carolina, hit me up and maybe I can give this thing to you. Honestly, I don't know what it costs to ship to you, and I'd prefer to just hand this off to somebody who needs it. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you on not just helping you figure out where to move, 
but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. Someone's a realtor now. Who wants to deal with a realtor they don't know when you can have me help you, right? Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.